well, let's figure out that must mean that underneath it is this, this, and this. That's not how this was built. This mm -hmm. was given this, you know, very simple framework. What consequences does it have? Now, is it going to intersect with actual physics or did we just miss completely? And is this right. a model of nothing in particular? The, you know, it's very important that you build up from the simple model and then you see where you build. And it so happens that the amazing thing that was really the big surprise of a year and a bit ago is, you know, the thing we built is physics, basically. And that's the thing that was that was sort of the big surprise. It might not have been, you know, as it's turning out. OK, I now realize and I sh that I should have realized years ago that it's sort of inevitable that this has to be physics. But that wasn't obvious to me as we were building it. And it's it's the thing that's been really interesting to me is the realization that not only is it a model of physics, it's also a model of a whole bunch of other things. And that, you know, I had the experience with cellular automata that I worked on for many years. So cellular automata are just these extremely simple programs where you just have a, a line of cells, let's say each one is either black or white, and then a series of steps, you update the color of a cell according to the color of the cell above it and to its left and right, let's say. You might have thought that a simple rule like that would always lead to simple patterns of behavior. But the big discovery that I made in the early 1980s is that that's not true, that you can get very complicated behavior even from very simple rules. And the thing that happened with cellular automata is they're very minimal models. They're just, you have a line of cells or you have a, 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 an array of cells or whatever, and you're applying these local rules and you're updating the thing. Very minimal model. So then you roll the clock forward a few decades and you realize, oh gosh, there are models that use cellular automata for zillions of different things, from you know, road traffic flow to you know, the way leaves work, to the way that, um, uh, I don't know, catalysts and in, in, in surfaces work, to the way all kinds of different things all kinds of to mollusk pigmentation patterns, whatever, all kinds of different things. And so in a sense, you've had this very minimal model, which in that particular case assumes a certain structure of space and time, but you have a very minimal model and that model ends up being a model of lots of kinds of things. So in a sense, it's unsurprising that this much more flexible model that we have that we built for physics ends up looking like it's going to be a really I mean, a, you know, a very powerful model for the foundations of a whole bunch of other fields as well. And the thing that's really interesting about that is, you know, so I've been doing a whole bunch of work on metamathematics, the kind of overall structure of mathematics, where, where the nodes are not atoms of space, but the nodes are mathematical theorems. And the relationships between them are proofs of one theorem from another. Well, you mm -hmm. might say, what, is the, what on earth does that have to do with the structure of the physical universe? But it turns out that it looks like the, the formalistic structure of that is the same as the structure of the physical universe. And that's, um, that's something that's uh, both, uh, it's, it's, a, it's both surprising. And the most important thing for me is it means that you get to have this kind of cross connection of the ideas from metamathematics and the ideas from physics. So in physics, we've learned a lot of stuff about how general relativity works, how all these kinds of things work. So now we get to import those ideas into metamathematics and we get to import the ideas of mathematical logic into physics. Mm -hmm. And so by realizing that the underlying formalism is the same, we get to make that kind of uh, conversion. And this formalism also seems to be uh, really the right formalism to think about distributed computing. It may very well be the right formalism to think about systems biology. And it uh, the, the one that I've been poking at a lot recently is, is economics. And it may well be the right formalism to think about that. In each of these applications, the details of, of what the corresponding, what the thing that's like the atoms of space is, are different. And the details of how it works is different. But the point is that the overall structure, the overall formalism seems to carry over. And that allows you to use sort of big ideas from one field in, in another field. So that's, that's been, a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a more global theory than I ever imagined it could possibly be. And, and I've realized that um, the, you know, the fundamental uh, sort of struggle, in a sense, for these theories is the following. You have a simple rule underneath, but that simple rule, just like in my cellular automata, um, the simple rule leads to very complicated behavior. It beha leads to behavior that is 
computationally irreducible in the sense that it's complicated enough you can't tell what's going to happen without basically just running the rule and seeing what happens.